Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. Let not our enemies exult over us. Redeem us, O God of Israel, from all our distress. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us thank the Lord for this new day and for gathering us again around the table of His Word and Sacrament. Please pray that we may be able to live stream the whole of this Mass because we have been having connectivity problems in the area since yesterday. And so to our online viewers, if there will be problems, in the live streaming of this Mass, we ask for your indulgence. Let us now call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Look kindly, Lord, we pray on the devotion of your people, that those who by self-denial are restrained in body may by the fruit of good works be renewed in mind through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing, Forty days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. Then he had this proclaimed throughout Nineveh by decree of the king and his nobles. Neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep shall taste anything. They shall not eat, nor shall they drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he has in hand. Who knows, God may relent and forgive and withhold his blazing wrath so that we will not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spurn. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spurn. For you are not pleased with sacrifices, should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Please stand. Magsisi tayong matapos Kalin ang magbalik loob Sa magpapawad na Diyos Sa Kanya tayo'y tumulog At manumbalik na The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign. But no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, 
so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, our first reading today opens with these words. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Why a second time? Because when the word of God came to Jonah the first time, Jonah resisted. Jonah did not obey. He tried to escape God's call to go to Nineveh and to proclaim repentance. And so God had to call him a second time in order for him to obey and to follow. That is why Jonah is known to be a reluctant prophet. But if Jonah, upon hearing God's call, at first tried to escape and he was slow to respond, the people of Nineveh who heard his preaching immediately responded to God's call. At the preaching of Jonah, the Ninevites from the king to the people and even their animals immediately repented of their sins. The Ninevites were quick to respond. The Ninevites immediately heeded God's call. And in our gospel today, Jesus alludes to Jonah as the sign and at how Jonah became the reason why the Ninevites immediately repented. Jesus said, at the preaching of Jonah, the Ninevites repented quickly. And then Jesus said, there is something greater than Jonah here. He was, of course, referring to himself. And by saying that, Jesus is telling his listeners, if at the preaching of Jonah, the people of Ninevites immediately responded, quickly repented, so much more must you be quicker in responding to my message. The people who listen to Jesus must be quicker in responding to the call of repentance because Jesus is greater than Jonah. But unfortunately, the people of Jesus' time were slow to respond because they were slow to believe in Him. My dear brothers and sisters, our readings today are stories about people who are slow to respond, like Jonah and like the people during the time of Jesus. And also about stories of people who were quick 
to respond like the Ninevites. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, we like people who are quick to respond. And we hate people who are so slow to respond. Gustong-gusto natin yung mabilis sumagot. Kapag tinext mo, sasagot agad. Kapag tinanong mo, may sagot agad. Ayaw na ayaw natin yung ang tagal sumagot. Tinanong mo ngayon, tatlong araw ang hihintayin mo bago ka makatanggap ng sagot. Inis na inis tayo kapag nasi sin zone tayo. Nabasa na, hindi pa sinasagot. And sometimes I am guilty of that. Because of the many messages we receive sa social media, messages, emails. Kaya nga, meron na akong tagasagot no? para na lamang masagot yung lahat ng mga dapat sagutin at hindi madelay ang sagot. No? But we like quick answers to our questions. Quick decisions to things that, but, that must be decided on. Gusto natin mabilis sa pagsagot. When it comes to our faith, my dear brothers and sisters, how, how quick are we or how slow are we to respond to God? When God calls, do we hesitate? Are we reluctant to respond? Or do we delay our response? Or are we quick to answer God's call and God's invitation? Kapag narinig natin ang tinig ng Panginoon na tinatawag tayong tumulong sa ating kapwa, gaano tayo kabilis tumugon? O dinedelay ba natin ang ating pagsagot? Kapag narinig natin ang tawag ng Panginoon na magpasensya, magpatawad sa ating kapwa, gaano tayo kabilis sumagot? O nagdadalawang isip pa tayo sa pagsagot? Kapag narinig natin ang tawag ng Panginoon na pagsisihan ng ating kasalanan, magbagong buhay, talikdan at iwanan ang kasalanan, gaano ba tayo kabilis sumagot o binabaliwala natin ang tawag ng Panginoon? My dear brothers and sisters, this season of Lent, let us listen very well to the call of God. The call to repentance, the call to forgiveness, the call to conversion, the call to generosity, the call to do good works, the call to love. Let us listen very well to God's call. And even today, God will surely call each one of us. Let us listen to God's call. And when you hear God's call, do not hesitate. Do not delay your response. Do not be reluctant. And do not even resist. Answer immediately. Answer quickly. Answer now. Please stand. Jonah discovered that there is no getting away from the Lord. We now turn in prayer to God the Father for the grace to change our lives and to believe firmly in Christ's call to repentance. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer that the leaders of the church may work tirelessly in bringing God's message of <clears throat> repentance to those who seek the Lord with a sincere heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
that this season may be a time of renewal and conversion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. That like the citizens of Nineveh, we may renounce our evil ways and turn to God with a humble and contrite spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. That the sick may find security and love from those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. That the dead may find peace and happiness in the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray in silence for our own petitions. Let us pray for the petitions of the people who need our prayers and for the intentions offered in this Mass. Father of all, you gave us the sign of Jonah to foreshadow the coming of your Son. As from all eternity you willed his resurrection, associate us with him forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer to you, O Lord, what you have given to be dedicated to your name, that just as for our benefit you make these gifts a sacrament, so you may let them become for us an eternal remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us ask the Father to forgive our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. O God, who never ceased to nourish us by your sacrament, grant that the refreshment you give us through it may bring us an ending life through Christ our Lord. Amen. We wish to remind you of our Wednesday evening healing rosary for the world. Tonight, our host will be the Mary Queen of Peace Shrine, uh, the Edsa Shrine community, uh, because they are celebrating their feast day today. You know, tomorrow will be uh, the anniversary of Edsa Revolution. And so let us join the Edsa Shrine community this evening at 9 o'clock as they lead us in praying the rosary to Our Lady. Let us pray for healing and for peace. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Until the end, to your mission.